Matson and the Adahi Tano Program. Cars Plus, home of Guam's first and only lifetime limited powertrain warranty. IP&E, fueling excellence. McDonald's of Guam, I'm loving it. And King's Restaurants, always open, always local, and serving up favorites for over 40 years. Now on Primetime, over 20,000 EIP checks were printed over the weekend, ready to be placed in the mail. Plus, the first increment of $276 million of federal unemployment assistance will be transmitted to Guam Department of Labor this week. And with the island now in PCOR 2, we show you how some retailers are taking the necessary steps to follow the guidelines. Half a day and good evening. I'm Adriana Cotero. Thank you for tuning in. And before we get to the latest headlines, a message from one of our frontline heroes. Half a day, Guam. We are still in this together. Please continue to wash your hands and practice social distancing. Protehi. Thank you to all our frontline heroes. Almost $40 million in federal stimulus checks could be placed in the mail as early as tomorrow. Department of Revenue and Taxation Director Daphne Shimizu says staff worked over the weekend and printed 20,000 EIP checks on Mother's Day. Our team this morning is um, just going through the reports, making sure that we dot all our I's, cross all our T's before we transmit them. but. We're expecting to transmit checks over to the Treasurer of Guam for mailing beginning this afternoon at the latest. Last week, DRT received $107 million out of the $134 million in federal stimulus funding. Meanwhile, although the island is in peak core 2, Shimizu says the Barragata facility remains closed to customers as they work on a final plan to gradually reopen. We have like over 20 branches. So it takes a lot of coordination for us to make sure that we are open, but not just that we're open, that we're open safely. Currently, only services at the DPW Compound Business License Permit Center area are available. The Department of Revenue and Taxation announced that 94 refunds for 2018 and prior tax returns has been processed and will be mailed out this week. The checks total $338,786. This includes refunds that have been garnished to repay government debts for air-free returns filed on or before January 17, 2020. The first increment of $276 million for federal unemployment assistance will be transmitted to the Guam Department of Labor this week. But they're still working to stand up the application system, which according to DOL Director Dave De La Sola, will be completely online. The program integrity and the software is the crutch of the whole program. If this goes, gets lit up and it, and it runs smoothly and adequately and does what it needs to be done, then the program is just now getting the information in from each claimant and logging in and, and putting it in. This program will accept from iPhones to Androids to iPads to computers. You can do this all on that. He says the online application system should be up within two weeks, but applicants should already be getting their documents, such as a driver's license, passport, check stub, and furlough notice into digital form so they will be ready to upload. De La Sola says because the application is so voluminous, they are working on a pre-application form that people can use as a guide. DOL is also training new detailed staff to help with call-ins. They also released a video which is available on our website and social media platforms to further explain the application process. And just to be clear, approved applicants will be eligible for payments dating back to the date they were first laid off or furloughed. Guam officially entered peak core 2 at 8 a.m. on Sunday, allowing professional services, essential businesses, retail stores, beauty salons, and shopping malls doors to open. KUAM stopped by Guam Premier Outlet to speak with those who were the first to enter since the pandemic. All right, you're good. Then. Checking temperatures and taking a tally of everyone who enters. Hello. Hello. Thank you. Hand sanitizer stations right there. Please follow the arrows. Thank you. Guam Premier Outlets opens their doors, but with the new norm under PCOR 2. We are excited. Our tenants obviously are excited to, you know, get back to work, get back to some type of normalcy. Acting GPO Shopping Center Manager Suzanne Paris tells KUAM the new hours are from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. Everyone must wear a mask, only allowing people with temperatures less than 100 degrees to go inside. Staff are sanitizing areas every hour and limiting capacity to 775 people on the ground floor and no more than 200 people in the food court area. According to Perez, many national tenants are not open today. 
However, they plan to open in the coming weeks with their own protocols in place. However, a smaller businesses such as Vitamin World also open with additional safety measures in place. Store manager Christine Villacarta tells KUAM that while opening is nerve-wracking, the new standard brings calmness and relief for everyone. Up to four people in a store. Um, we do offer gloves as an extra protection to prevent um, cross-contamination. And then also, too, we have the ability to still take phone orders and curbside pickups if you don't feel comfortable being physically in the store. Also with new strict guidelines in place is Hair Town. New protocols would be um, have the client wash their hands um, and uh, uh, our stylist before uh, performing a uh, service and sanitizing the, the chair, spraying it down, just make sure our combs are, are fresh. It's definitely going to be challenging and a little bit more time consuming, but it'll definitely be worth it. Hairstylist Sapphire says she was instantly booked with clients, and while she is looking forward to serving her longtime customers, she did feel hesitant on returning to work. I think it's a little early, to be honest. It kind of scares me a little bit, but I, at least if we play it safe, then hopefully... It runs smoothly and we don't have any more outbreaks. Sharing a different view, GRMC physician Paul Lobeck was one of the first to enter GPO this morning. I don't believe we're opening up early. I think we have to do this eventually. I think we're doing it in a phase structure, which is exactly the way you should do it. Slowly introduce ourselves back into reality. Obviously, day-to-day -day life is very important. So, uh, so this will slowly get us back into it. We just can't forget the importance of wearing masks and doing social distancing as we start getting people back together into their normal routine. Something all shoppers and employees understand, this is the new norm for Guam. Be safe, Guam. Uh, wash your hands 20 seconds, wear a mask at all times. And, you know, this is a, a time for change and adjustments, but we're in this together. There was no press conference with the governor today, but Lieutenant Governor Joshua Tenorio answered several questions on the cost for containing COVID. Sabrina Salas Montanani reports. He's not the public health authority, but the governor has maintained her special powers give her the authorization to task her legal counsel, Haig Yun, to negotiate procurement for COVID-19. Lieutenant Governor Josh Tenorio a week ago said there's some red flags with the Packstar procurement as a quarantine isolation facility. Today, he told KUAM. I think that was proper critique about what happened uh, in this transaction. And since then, uh, my expectation is that uh, the folks at um, the, all the people with the internal controls at Department of Administration at the AG's office at GSA uh, would continue to do their job uh, and then in this transaction uh, basically find a path to make sure that the, that the uh, promise, I guess, to the vendor because the services have been rendered are going to be made and then they find the proper path for them to be compensated. As we reported, questions were also raised about the possible misuse of public health authority and public health director Linda and Pinko DeNorsi's digital signature on a document designating the PAC star as a quarantine isolation facility. During an oversight hearing Friday, she told senators that although local law gives her special powers under a public health emergency, she hasn't been involved in COVID procurement. DeNorsi told Senator, she couldn't recall the call when it came to authorizing her digital signature. I wasn't involved in the call, <laughs> but she's the only one that would have, you know, received the call. If she didn't re recall, then she didn't recall. It. I would always continue to trust that mm -hmm. with her. And it's not just the Packstar procurement raising concerns, but a contingent of cabinet members, directors, and deputies staffing the facility all of whom are getting 15% differential pay as part of the governor's COVID-19 response pay policy. Do you think, though, that, that that was the right decision to put all these directors and deputy directors? I mean, you have almost the entire cabinet up there working. I mean, and well, DYA director and DYA deputy director, like, don't they have a correctional facility for youth to be running? I'll have to find out, Bree. Well, it but sounds like that wasn't really your call, LT. <laughs> no, it's not. But, uh, you know, maybe what I'd say is those are the first people that will be able to 
uh, be assigned immediately, understanding there's risk and not wanting to risk others. But, you know, we're I'll have to get more visibility on that. As for the issue of double pay, the lieutenant governor said they are doing their best to give essential employees their proper compensation. Additionally, discussions are still underway on an alternate shelter for the island's homeless population. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Sabrina Salas, Matt Tanani. You can watch the entire interview with the lieutenant governor on our YouTube channel. The governor's soldiers answered the Magahaga's call to service. That's how Pacific Star Quarantine Manager Rebecca Respicio describes how directors and deputy directors ended up staffing GovGuam COVID-19 facilities. Chris Barnett has more. We have been really getting a beating from the community. And, you know, I mean, we haven't exactly taken the time to defend ourselves because, like, honestly, we just are staying focused on the mission. And although um, what's been happening has you know, like you said, taking a hit on the morale, honestly, it really hasn't faltered us. Like, we have not um, felt the need to want to stop doing this or, or to just, you know, wash our hands of this process. We understand that we were called to to execute the governor's executive order and the mission remains. Guam Energy Office Director Rebecca Respicio telling KUAMs containing COVID, when the governor needed something done, she knew who to call even though Lou and Josh's political hires had no experience in running a public health quarantine facility. So of course the governor is going to call on her soldiers. Mm-hmm. Well, so, so why not the know? National Guard, though? Well, uh, yeah, I, yeah, I can't really speak to that, but they were eventually activated. Respicio agreed that Adeloupe left the quarantine cabinet hung out to dry. And she said policy director Carlo Branch's example of Respicio and her other half, Guam housing head Alice Tyron, Providing towels for guests in the middle of the night was not an accurate representation of how hard they're working at quarantine facilities. Housekeeping duties is a complete understatement, you know, with regards to the responsibilities that we have. We're not running a hotel. We're running a quarantine facility. Respicio telling us social media and public comments have hit her hard. We know that the job that we're doing is working and we are still staying focused on the mission regardless of the community's um, punches, you know, and I've taken a personal beating as well as Alice and our names and our character has been questioned throughout, you know, the community. And what about the controversial 15% COVID differential pay directors and deputy directors are supposed to be getting for quarantine work? Respicio saying pay was never an issue. There was no talk of pay. There was no talk of, well, are we going to get paid to do something this risky? Are you going to accept the pay or or not? I'm going to be honest with you and tell you that for me, I have not done one single timesheet relative to my COVID hours. But it, I mean, again, it's just because that wasn't a priority. And I, and, but it's not to say that, and and I'm just going to say that I just also haven't had time to Right. to really check my hours. This has just been so crazy. We knew it was completely risky. We were going to be working with passengers. And based on what the world was going through, we knew that we were going to be putting ourselves at risk. So the volunteers that stepped up volunteered and basically said, um, we don't have the details. We don't know if we're going to get paid. That's not the goal. That, that doesn't matter to us. We know that we have to keep the island safe. For Guam's News Network, Chris Barnett reports. Stick around for more news here on Primetime. You're watching KUAM. While we've all been through a lot over the years, typhoons, earthquakes, and now COVID-19, we've been able to get through these together. For more than 80 years, Pablo's Insurance has been protecting your homes, your businesses, and the health of your family. We are here today, and we'll be here tomorrow. There are better days ahead. Tomorrow's a new day filled with hope hope and choices. The possibilities of what we can achieve together are limitless. Let's continue to work together to ensure a brighter tomorrow for all of us. Ruby Tuesday Guam is still preparing the dishes you love for either curbside carryout or delivery. Call them at 647-7828 or 647-7829 for curbside carryout service with a smile. For delivery, download the free Grab and Grub app and follow the instructions to get Ruby Tuesdays delivered to your door. Stay safe and healthy, Guam.
we are open to serve you at Cars Plus Guam. Need a quick service for your vehicle? Visit our express lane at Cars Plus. Done fast, done right. No appointment needed. Our service team is dedicated to helping you get your vehicle in and out of the shop and back on the road quickly and securely. Simply drop off your vehicle at our express lane driveway and one of our service advisors will take care of you. Need a ride? Not to work. We have a shuttle vehicle ready to drop you back home and pick you up when your vehicle is ready. Open Monday to Saturday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Visit us today. We are open to serve you. Hop a day. I'm Bernie Valencia with Matson. Our local Matson team understands that these are very trying times for everyone. Matson's top priority, like yours, is to keep our families safe and healthy and ensure you have what you need. We'd like to give you peace of mind that Matson's service continues on schedule and uninterrupted. Matson is committed to our weekly service from the United States West Coast to Honolulu into Guam and Saipan. We are working with the Port Authority of Guam and providing the capacity and services our customers need so they can continue to meet your needs. Matson will take all appropriate measures to ensure continuity of service into Guam and Saipan. When we work together to take care of our family and neighbors, we will emerge from this as a stronger island community. This public service announcement was brought to you by the Port Authority of Guam, KOAM Communications, and Matson. Big day of closet organizing and jigsaw puzzling? Get Pizza Hut's Big Dinner Box, two medium pizzas, breadsticks, and your choice of pasta or wings. Sealed for your safety, all in one box. Choose contactless delivery or new curbside pickup at PizzaHut.com. It's a special delivery to your inbox every week with your KUAM News Roundup, program advisories, and promotions. Sign up for the weekly KUAM Digital Digest today on KUAM.com. The CNMI's 16th confirmed case of COVID-19 is a Guam resident traveling to Saipan. United Airlines Corporate Communications tells KUAM they're taking every precaution, including removing the subject aircraft from operation for an entire cabin sanitization process. Our Tomas Manglotnia reports from the Northern Mariana Islands with the details. A Guam resident traveling to Saipan is the 16th confirmed case of coronavirus in the CNMI. The 67-year-old male was tested through the airport surveillance process on Saturday and remains in quarantine at Kanoa Resort. The NMI Governor's Press Secretary, Kevin Bautista, says that the 24 passengers on board were quarantined and tested. They're, they're put into a, our text monitoring system. They are checked by CHEC staff twice a day, um, get the temperature reading, and then they're interviewed um, briefly about any symptoms that they, they develop within the 14 days. Bautista explains what contact tracing might look like for airline passengers exposed to a positive case on a fuller flight. They identify those individuals and and bring them in to, to, through the contact tracing and do a possible quarantine of these six individuals in front, the six individuals in the back, and then the ones in the side, um, adjacent to the individual. United Airlines resumed flights this month between Guam and Saipan three times a week after suspending its services in April at the request of Governor Torres. Meanwhile, Star Marianas tells KUAM that they're in conversations with the CNMI government to formalize the return service date in the coming week for travel to Rhoda and Tinian. In terms of suspending future flights, again, the, the, this goes back to a conversation that we're having with the federal, with the federal family partners. Um, right now, as it stands, um, the CNMI and Guam, for that matter, still has no control over its flights, and we continue to be as as cognizant as we can be, but also working within the parameters that we're dealt with. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Tomas Manglonia. Of the CNMI's total cases, there remains 12 recoveries and two deaths. They continue to enforce social distancing measures as the community awaits a plan from the CNMI governor for a gradual reopening. The Guam Election Commission is gearing up for the Arizona special election to fill the vacancy left by the resignation of former Mayor Jesse Blas. The election is scheduled to be held on May 30th. GEC Executive Director Maria Pangalinen says they've purchased infrared therm therm thermometers to evaluate voters before casting their ballot. We have that. Um, as soon as we get some training, we will use them. Uh, we, you know, we've gone to the CDC website and we've, we've talked to um, deputy directors and the director of public health uh, to get us assistance to get this thing going. 
Former Mayor Bloss resigned after being jailed for several months on bribery and extortion charges. Running for Zonia Mayor on the Democrat side of the ballot are Ethan Camacho, Christina Perez, Bill Quinya, Edward Terlahi, Roca Stacquio, and Cedric Diaz. Running under the Republican ticket is Franklin Hitton. Meanwhile, just today, the GEC began accepting candidates for those wanting to run in the upcoming election for mayor, vice mayor, public auditor, Washington delegate, and senator. The deadline to file is June 30th. If you plan on filing at the GEC, you must wear a mask. As the use of face masks become part of the new normal under the phase reopening of the economy, there's one group of people who face additional challenges. Nesta LaConta reports on the impact of deaf people and the hearing impaired. While the use of masks is meant to protect others while you're out in public, audiologist Renee Coffind of Guam Hearing Doctor says it does present a problem for her hearing impaired patients. When you have a mask on, not only does it muffle a person's speech, but it also takes away from their ability to use visual facial expressions and do any type of lip reading, which is important when you have hearing loss because communication is not just hearing. Understanding conversation is not just an auditory thing. It's also very visual. She says social distancing is also a challenge. So what she's had to do with patients is adjust their hearing aids. Well, now we're six feet apart. So not only is their face covered, but your primary speaker is at a greater distance. So now they can press the button on their hearing aid and that hearing aid would be a louder setting that, uh, which would allow them to hear a conversation better. There are other ways to help, she says, like control your rate of speaking and how you ask questions. And instead of saying, what do you want on your pizza? What do you want on your pizza? And repeating the same thing, you can always say, well, I'm gonna have pepperoni and cheese on my pizza. What would you like on your pizza? So rephrasing the question and slowing down the rate of your speech does help a person with hearing loss with or without a mask. And if you're having difficulty hearing, it might be time under this new normal to finally see someone about a hearing test. For Guam's News Network, I'm Nestor Leconto. He's accused of supplying the gun in a recent murder case. A magistrate's complaint charges Bruce Diaz with drug and illegal gun possession violations. A police investigation alleges Diaz gave John Mindiola the firearm used to kill Peter Rios. Mindiola was charged in court for the shooting death of Rios. On May 8th, police executed a search warrant at Diaz's home. Diaz told officers he's known Mindiola since childhood and they, including Rios, were involved with meth. Based on witness reports, Mindiola was not alone in his vehicle the morning Rios was found shot in a Mung Mung apartment. Diaz said Mindiola came over at 3 a.m. asking to borrow a firearm to, quote, go and collect, unquote, meaning collect payment for drug sales. He said he woke up his son and instructed him to follow Uncle John. And 10 minutes later, his son told him Uncle John used the gun. While executing the search warrant, police also found two plastic baggies containing meth and drug paraphernalia, including a scale. And coming up, we celebrate the class of 2020. Don't go away. More freedom. To learn more. To create more. To connect more. Mix and match data pass. Take your data further. MTO Maintenance will now completely sanitize your home, office, or business with state-of-the-art commercial sprayers. For over 30 years, MTO Maintenance has been committed to the health and safety of our customers. And now, more than ever, a clean home, office, carpets, and furniture is a necessity to our island. Give us a call today. Stay healthy and stay safe, Guam. Call 647-6861 for an appointment. What does the Brilliant Cut mean to me? It means consistent quality, right across the age expressions. We never compromise on quality and flavour. 
It's also the very particular cut of spirit we take to fill our barrels. Tasting it today is just as exciting as the first time I tasted it. That is the brilliant cut. Gather round the cravings pack from Taco Bell. Four crunchy tacos and four beefy five-layer burritos paired perfectly with all your Taco Bell favorites. So grab a cravings pack for your crew at Taco Bell's contactless drive-thru. Graduation is such a momentous occasion, but because of the COVID-19 crisis, the class of 2020 will not have the chance to celebrate their achievement in a traditional way. We continue to show our support to the entire class of 2020 in a special user-generated segment with submissions from their loved ones. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time once again to celebrate the class of 2020 with your head of the class. First up, McGawhit Jackson, graduating from Uggeta Johnston, uh, the eighth grade. Uh, McGawhit High School may seem big and scary, but be yourself. You are a smart, sweet, caring kid. Have a fun and amazing next chapter of your life. Your dad and I love you and are so proud of you. And also a big congratulations going out to the entire social work class of 2020 from UOG to the amazing social work class of 2020. I love you all to the moon and back. Thank you for being a part of an amazing journey. Can't wait to hear about all the amazing things we do. Also graduating, Nathan Rusty Paris from Malesu, graduating Southern High School, son of Ryan Paris and Anna Nangauta, also ranked as Command Sergeant Major for uh, Southern High Knight Battalion. He aspires to join the Navy, so best of luck to you and congratulations. Also graduating from GW High School, Zachary Dean Perez Zanoni. Congratulations, Zachary. Let your smile change the world but don't let the world change your smile. You will forever be that special puzzle piece that completes our puzzle in the Perez Zanoni family. You are always understanding, totally intelligent, sometimes mysterious. Hashtag Team Zachary. Hashtag we love someone with autism. We are so proud of you. And Xavier Jesus Manglotnia Chargalov graduating from GW as well. Congratulations, son. We love you and are so proud of you. Love your family. Jamie A. Taylor and Keanu Sablon, graduating from JFK and Teedson High School. We are all proud of you both. Love your family. I think it's safe to say that we're all proud of everyone graduating this year. And that is your head of the class. You can watch more submissions every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday on KVM News. And before we close out the news tonight, our latest round of birthday shout outs from the Coldstone Creamery Birthday Club. It is May 11th, so happy birthday to Zayden Ty Savaris. We're proud of you and we love you. Say Daddy, Tiana, Riri, Kai, Haven, and Grams. Juliana Regine Santos, otherwise known as Anna Bear. Happy sixth birthday to you. Mommy and Daddy love you so much. Happy Sweet 16 to Keona Castro from Mom, Dad, and your entire family. 
And happy birthday to Taya Haani Cruz Jones, who blows up the candles today. Special belated birthday love is going out to Rayana Lynn Baza, who was born on the 9th. Happy birthday number 26 to our oldest love, your family. And born on the 10th, Zayden Doyle. Happy belated birthday to our superhero who turned 6 on May 10th. We love you so much. Say mommy, daddy, and your entire family. That's a great batch of birthday celebrants, everybody. Happy birthday to each and every one of you. Remember, you can be part of the Cold Stone Creamery Birthday Club by registering online on KOEM.com. Please make sure to include with your photo your name and birth date. That's going to do it for us here on Primetime. Thanks for watching and have a good night. Buy with confidence is the Triple J Advantage.